fruit, and the time has come. Time to talk about some Foo Fighter songs. And I thought it'd be fun to start with the emotional, sappy song about getting dumped, Walking After You. Truthfully, Walking After You is in my top five favorite Foo Fighter songs of all time. I've always loved this song. And I've grown to love it even more in recent years, which I didn't think was possible. And during my time self-isolating in the Kiwi Cave, along with reading Dave's true stories on Instagram, I watched some live performances of Walking After You, and I want to talk about them. But before we get into any of those live performances, I do want to cover Walking After You's song structure. As a baseline, I'm going to be covering the color and the shape song structure and the X-Files version song structure. I think it's safe to say that the version you hear on the color and the shape was 100% done by Dave Grawl. I know that Wikipedia says that Nate did the baseline, but after some intense research, I can't find anything backing that up. Everything I've read, including the Wikipedia page for the color and the shape, it says Dave recorded Walking After You by himself. To be fair, it's a pretty easy mistake to make, because when you look inside the booklet for the color and the shape, it doesn't give any indication Dave played bass on Walking After You. But I digress. The song structure for this version is as follows. Intro, verse, chorus number one, verse, chorus number one, chorus number two, interlude, verse, chorus number one, chorus number two, outro. Now the version for the X-Files movie soundtrack. 20th Century Fox requested Foo Fighters to record a song for the X-Files movie. Cool, although they just written A320 for the Godzilla movie soundtrack. So instead of writing another new song, they decided to re-record Walking After You as a four-piece. And they also had their producer, Jerry Harrison, on piano. According to Wikipedia, Craig Wedren of Shudder to Think did the backing vocals. But he's not credited for doing it on FooFightersLive.com. But he was credited for performing with them on David Letterman. I even checked the X-Files The Album booklet, and yep, it just says it was written by our boy David. But I digress once more. The song structure for this recording had a few tweaks, and it goes as follows. Intro, verse, verse, chorus number one, chorus number two, interlude, verse, chorus number one, outro. We get two verses right away, whereas in the Color and the Shape version, Dave goes straight to chorus number one before we get another verse. The other major difference is we only get chorus number two once in the X-Files version, but we get it twice in the Color and the Shape version. And there's a few other minor differences, such as the length of the outro and the length of some verses. Alright, with that out of the way... Personally, I think the X-Files soundtrack version is better, hands down. It's a better arrangement and it exploits the unexpectedness of the changeup in the chorus. Chorus number two is treated more as a big moment of the song in the X-Files version, whereas it just kind of blended in in the Color and the Shapes version. Hearing the two versions back to back is a perfect example on why your song arrangement matters. Walking After You was a great song before, but a change in arrangement made it a fantastic song. But I once again digress. On to some live performances. <laughs> song structure-wise, their Letterman performance follows the X-Files structure. And there's our boy Craig Wedren again. Another quick side note about Craig Wedren, if you have a chance to go see him live, do it. I saw him live back in 2011 when he opened up for Chris Cornell. He was really interesting to watch. Rest in peace, Chris Cornell. He is also responsible for recording one of my favorite TV themes of all time, which is the TV theme for MTV's The State. Which, oh my god, if you are into sketch comedy, you need to go watch The State after this video, go to Prime Video, get your free trial of MTV hits, binge all four seasons within the seven days, then cancel it so you're not slammed with $5.99 a month. Not sponsored by Amazon. I did like this performance a lot, but I thought the harmonies were a little too loud. I really like this performance otherwise, though. Also, this little run Nate had. <laughs> Dave sang in front of a pre-recorded track and put in some sick contact lenses. My favorite part was the feedback on the microphones at the beginning. I love this performance. I wish we had a studio recording of this rendition. It's a little faster and there's just something about the way Taylor plays drums in this performance. Song structure wise, it follows the X-Files form pretty closely, but they eliminated a verse. Dave also talked about the Walkin' After You music video in this performance. The next song we made a suck ass video for. Uh, we made this me, I did. It wasn't a we thing, it was me. Since we'd always made funny videos, we thought it'd be a really good idea to try to like... Yeah, make it... <laughs> try to... 
Trying to really establish the handsome side of the band. <laughs> Evidently, it didn't fucking work. All right, let's talk about the music video for a second. Yes, Dave has a point that it's a little weird to see a serious music video out of Foo Fighters, but at the same time, I think this handsome side of the band was established. So he made a video with the fashion director, photographer. It was really nice. He did a good job. I just felt so dumb, man. Me and this girl pressed up against glass and stuff. <laughs> She was hot. I never saw her again. Overall, I'm really glad Dave did the video. Yeah, it's no white limo, but it is very aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> if I am being completely honest, I'm pretty underwhelmed by the Skin and Bones rendition. And there's two driving factors to why I feel this way. So first of all, you have this percussionist over here playing cymbals, and then you have Taylor playing Ride on top of that. Listening to the color and the shapes drum beat. And the cymbal builds as the song goes on. And then Taylor introduces a more intricate drum part in the X-Files version. And Taylor brought that same intricate drum beat into the artist's direct performance. instrumentation seems like the perfect storm to have Taylor's intricate drum part, but he decided to go for the ride cymbal. I don't know, in my opinion there was something missing. And I'm not necessarily suggesting that just because you have big instrumentation doesn't mean you need intricate drum parts. I just think the arrangement would have sounded better if Taylor did the intricate snare line instead of going to the ride cymbal. Also, in my opinion, I wish there was vocal harmonies in this too. Song structure-wise, this rendition followed the color and the shape song structure. The only thing different is lengthwise, the last verse is as long as the first verse, whereas in other versions it wasn't. After Skin and Bones, Walking After You was only played live four more times, which really bums me out, but I get it. There are other Foo ballads that are just more popular, but I do believe Walking After You is incredibly underrated. And for better or for worse, it is the handsome side of Foo Fighters. She was hot. I never saw her again. <laughs>